Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you all are doing great. Okay, so I am getting ready to do my Pinterest inspiration collaboration project. But this project, I felt like I wanted to record it because I feel like I'm going to put in some work. So I'm going to bring you along. Of course, you'll see the completed project after uh, you see this one, before you see this one, I guess. So a few things, I got this um, Michaels, it's just some white acrylic paint. I picked this up from Walmart and it was 10 cents. Thankfully I found it because I got something else that did not work. I started to do this video um, last week and I was just like, oh, it's not gonna work. Then I have these round dowels and I think they're too large for the project. I think these are 12 inches. Yeah, they probably should be six, so I may have to just cut them in half. Um, you saw me do this right here. You saw me haul this in a Dollar Tree video, a Dollar Tree haul. And then I picked these up the other day because they do match this pattern right here. So first thing we're all going to do is do some light painting and light decoupaging. Okay, um... I don't know where I got the paint brushes from. Probably Walmart. And what I am going to do this, the reason why I'm painting this is because I want it to be white, <laughs> right? Not um, heart shaped, even though hearts are fine. I want it to be white and I don't have like a palette or anything because it's just plain white. And I'm actually going to hopefully just do one coat of paint I have learned that painting over your projects before you start working with them is a great way to um, mute any of the color that may be underneath it. Um, so that's what I normally do when I am working on a project, like I did some terracotta pots. Um, last month in February and I painted them white first because I had used terracotta pots in the past and I tried everything spray painting and it did not come out the way I thought they should come out. The problem with me and projects is sometimes, and this happened when I was younger too, I have an idea, I would have an idea in my head and I didn't do as much research as I do now. So for example, I had went and bought a lot of the galvanized um, tins because I was going to make little baskets and give them to, I can't remember, was it, was it co-workers, teachers, something. And I was just not, it was not coming out the way I wanted to come out. Um, and I ended up scrapping a project and it was with stenciling. Can you believe that? I was trying to stencil on galvanized um, paint um, a tin and paint. I can't remember the whole entire detail, but it was just horrible um, because I didn't know what the heck I was doing, first of all. So that's always a plus to have some kind of working knowledge. Don't always just go into a project blind. I know a lot of people like that, and some people do not like to um, research at all. I'm not going to paint this because I want it to dry fairly quickly I'm gonna do two of them well three um, I'm just gonna do three of these because I feel like I may have to go back to the Dollar Tree if this project comes out really nice I may go back to the project the, the project I may go back to Dollar Tree and get more they have some um, I had went to Dollar Tree yesterday looking for the no day before yesterday looking for the napkins because I was like, if they have a whole entire line, they have like the, the lantern, the plates, the, um, I didn't even check for bowls. I wouldn't even have to do this if they had bowls. But, you know, sometimes when you build on a project, it works out great for you. I'm going to try to do two coats and this, hopefully it's a matte finish. It doesn't say right off the bat what it is. So I think it's matte. It's okay if it's not because it's going to get covered up. But I just like a matte feeling on things that I'm painting over versus a shiny finish because you know with the Mod Podge even though all of the Mod Podge that I have it says matte it always seems to have like a 
a glossier sheen than what I feel is matte. In my mind, matte is like dry. Um, and glossy is shiny, right? <laughs> matte looks dry. But, um, let's see. I'm not trying to get the lip. I'm glad it does have a lip so I don't have to really get a lot of this paint on my fingers. Which is awesome. So I'll go to Dollar Tree and I think I'm by myself. So the big roommate was home. Nope. I was with the little roommate. And I say, um, I pick up the packaging of the lantern. I said, do you have napkins in this? And the lady's like, um, no, I haven't seen them. Okay. Whenever I ask people for certain things, I still go and check. Unless they actually seem like they know what I'm talking about. If they have no clue, I'm just going to go back over this once more time one one more time and then we'll move on to the next portion if they um you know and this is any customer service and i'll tell you a story about what happened over the weekend to to me as well um she was like no i haven't seen it yet and i was like okay so here i am walking 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 lo and behold they have two or three different kinds of napkins for this situation i'm just like okay you know, I didn't go back and say, look, I found them just in case. Because, you know, sometimes people don't want to be bothered with customers. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's so weird. Customer service is so lacking and everyone complains about it. Um, I think it just starts with, you know, telling someone good morning. Like, I'm a big speaker. And here in San Antonio, people are not big responders. So, you know, like... You've heard my um, little roommate, my son, come on when he gets up and he and, he and he finds out that mommy's upstairs and not downstairs or wherever. He'll come in and the first thing he'll tell me, usually if I'm sitting downstairs when he's awake or if I'm open in the open, not, you know, in my crafty space, he'll say good morning. He'll give me a hug and a kiss because that's what I've conditioned him to do. Right. And I want him to be like that because I really wasn't taught that when I was growing up. I think I'm going to have to let this dry a little bit longer because it's just moving the paint. It's not really sticking to it because it this has a glossy, glossy sheen to it as well. So I will let it dry for a few more minutes. I'm not going to bust out the heat tool. Uh -huh. You all know how I feel about that. Heat tools and stuff. Unless I really, really need it. I really don't need it. Um, if this needs to be a two or three part video, then that's fine, I guess. Fine for me, probably not fine for you, but. You know, so. Um, that's what I teach him, you know, that's what I tell him, you know, when he wakes up in the morning. Sometimes he wake up grumpy, but other than that, I'll w he'll wake up and he'll say, you know, good morning. And he'll give me a kiss and a hug because I didn't get that when I was growing up. I want him to have it. Okay, while that is drying, I'm going to go ahead and prepare my napkin. Now, the one thing I'll tell you about putting napkins on round items, it's great if it's a complete circle because it works well. So, for example, this is a complete cylinder circle. You know, it's no difference. But if I was to try to do this portion right here, it would give me a little bit of problem because it puckers. So, what you could do to make sure that this is a complete round circle and it doesn't go up any, you see it stays kind of the same way, you could take your project, your napkin, whatever you're working on, and just wrap it around to see if it's actually going to um, give you any problems. So, once, once you wrap it around... If you don't see any puckering, tuckering, anything like that, you're lucky, right? Good good job. You don't have to worry about that. But if you're working like with terracotta pots, things like that, it could be a hassle. So, um, as you saw, it did fit almost perfectly, of course. Story of my life. Um, this does not fit the entire way. And that's okay because, I mean, I have 16 napkins, right? I think it's 16 and you know that breaks my heart to spend a dollar on just 16 napkins even though that's pretty a good deal from what I've been told 
I just wish it was more. <laughs> so I'm going to go right here. And I'm just going to um, use my pencil and make my little seam right here. Because I don't want to have to fold this over too many times. You know, tuck it underneath here. So let's go back over. And I'll show what I'm talking about. So you see like right here, I'm just going to push this in. So I don't want to have to push a lot of it in. I want it to be like seamless. And now um, what I'm going to do is just fold this over on the line. This ruler is definitely not necessary. You could eyeball this if you want to, but I want to use um, two, two strands on this napkin. So I'm going to do this with a pencil. I'm gonna fold it over. Well, I don't even need to do that because it's seven centimeters. So I can just measure seven centimeters from this line. You know, that's the great thing about rulers. <laughs> you really don't need to guesstimate if you don't have to. Um, of course, a lot of people, myself included, don't like to math um, when it comes to crafting, which I do not even like that crafting and numbers are associated together but they are okay so we got this and then that little small sliver will be coming out of this so i'm going to go ahead and cut it okay so i have cut this down and i watched a video um from this lady that was making some flowers and she used a rotary cutter and I want to try it out. <laughs> this right here is not like a, you know, how a lot of people have like the, um, this is my desk. This is like my actual desk. I need to protect it because I didn't want to cut that. Um, so I need to get some protect. I actually need to put my mat back on there, but I just felt like I was abusing the mat too much. I'm not going to use this white paintbrush. I thought about it and I, I changed my mind. Um, and now that I've cut the, the tissue, the napkin down, I'm thinking I probably should have cut it a little bit more. I, you know, I wasn't trying to conserve it. I just feel like I could have cut it more to have some more bunching uh, underneath, underneath it, but I didn't, you know, hindsight. And so I'm almost finished with my, um, I'm right here with this Mod Podge. That is a first for me and this is dry it's almost a hundred percent dry which I'm grateful for um, but we're just going to go right here you know what I didn't bring you guessed it I did not bring the um, clean wrap I have something that's not actual clean wrap it's just clear plastic so we're gonna see if that works and I'm not too concerned about the bottom but I do want to go you know I do want to put it on the bottom even though whoever's getting this they should not be inspecting the bottom but you know a lot of people inspect stuff because they're like oh I could do better I can make um, I can make that how was it made how they construct it so, you know, I understand. I've done that too. I've actually violated someone's um, making rights before because I've seen people's things. I'm like, that's a lot, you know, um, at fairs. I wouldn't say like anywhere else when people have made things. Like um, when I was thinking I was going to just do crochet. Hmm. I was like, oh, I could definitely, you know, make that. Or I've seen people like that ruffle ribbon that I had to have a couple of years ago and um, I've only learned how to do one thing with which is 
in my opinion, a waste of money now. Um, I was like, oh, I, may, I make those. You know, that's one thing you should never do to another crafter. Never. And so I've learned, I wouldn't say the hard way because I haven't did a show yet. But I've definitely learned that that's something that you don't do to someone that's taking their time to make something and, you know, that's their business. So I'm just going around just like that. And I have, you know, I did put this at the bottom, so that is good as well. I'm going to go ahead and put more at the bottom. Only because I feel like if I put it at the bottom ahead of time, I don't have to worry about it later on. And with dec with decoupage, decoupage, my podge, um, I feel like you can be very generous on the application unless you want it to dry really quickly. You know, if you want it to dry really quickly, then don't apply a lot. But you will have to make sure that all of the area that you're applying something on is covered. Don't sacrifice your end result for quick results. I hope that makes sense. So if you want something, a quick project, maybe don't use Mod Podge or Decoupage or don't apply. Um, you know, you may have to do more than one coat. So I think it says this dries fairly quickly. Let's say 15 to 20 minutes. Um, no, that's for puzzles. Let's see. That's not even English brandy. Yeah, dry times between coats is 15 to 20 minutes. Um, so... You know, if you don't put a lot on, like if you don't saturate your work surface, and this is the work surface, right? That's your work surface. If you don't saturate it, then you don't really have to worry about it. The one thing about Mod Podge, in my opinion, which is funny, it's so unforgiving once you've stuck it on. Like, um, it's like, I'm not, I'm not moving. I'm not going to do this. You should have thought about what you want to do before you even did it don't ask me to adjust or anything so you know when you're applying your my pod you need to really know how you want it to be i've tried i did a my Podge project about six or seven years ago again knew nothing about it. i just knew it was glue didn't do a lot of research um maybe like seven years ago now maybe eight even and um It, it just came out really bad. It was a horrible project. Was it eight years ago? No, it's maybe five. Maybe five years ago. Five years ago. Um, and I just learned from that. I was just like, I don't think my Podge is my friend. I don't understand, you know, the concept behind it. What's the big deal? And then once I learned how to use it a lot better... Um, it just... It just got easier. You know, sometimes you don't know what you're doing, and that's fine. You don't have to profess to anyone but yourself that you are a genius um, before you actually become a, a crafting genius. And you see how it's like rippling up? I really like that because it is nature. You know, it's a nature scene, and it's really cute. Now, I probably would if I had known that this... If they had bowls like this, I wouldn't be decoupaging. I would have just got the bowls. Not, you know, just sitting here talking with you all. That's what I have, you know, that's what the conclusion I've come to that um, I could have got the bowls. If they have bowls, I don't know. Because the lady said they didn't have napkins. So, you know how that is. Um, and I was with the little roommate. And sometimes, um, I'm not sure how you are with your kids. You know, um, he's my only one. So, He's my test kid as well as my finishing kid, the middle kid. He's all of them in, in one. I'm not, I don't plan on having any more children because um, I'm much older and I want to see them graduate from college and start a family. So, the, you know, the later I start, the less possibility that is like um, he watches a lot of cartoons and they have you know cartoons are unrealistic in so many ways like they talk about grandparents brothers and sisters you know um i guess the american dream 2.5 kids white picket fence all that stuff we don't have that that's not the american dream for 
the left-handed crafter household um, because neither one of our parents are alive. So he always says he wants to, can he call grandma and stuff like that? I'm like, son, grandma is not here. And you've never even physically seen her. I've never, you know, I've never introduced them together. Now this could have been a lot neater, but I feel like it was drying because I'm running my mouth a lot more than I should be. And if you notice, I had, when I originally measured it out, it didn't measure properly, right? But now it's actually touching. So that's good. I don't have to worry about chopping a piece and putting it in. All right, so this is our finished wonkiness. Don't worry about it not being straight or um, fitting in. It's going to work out fine. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to seal it in now. And sealing it in just means that you are making sure your napkin does not is not able to be ripped off of the your work and by doing this you seal it in and this is what I was talking about early when I said Mod Podge was not forgiving and what I mean by that is that it is I have not been able to color over Mod Podge I'm quite sure you can but I just haven't been able to I think that's why people use other types of mediums um, to glue down different projects and I watched a glue video can you when you know something and you know you have the knowledge it just helps a lot I watched a video on creative bug where the lady is talking about different glues and um, I don't think she talks about tape like adhesive tape she talks about all glues like wet glue sticks spray glues all kinds of great glues which is amazing and um you learn i learned a lot from her um she talks about mod podge she talks about elmer's glue stick like glue sticks hot glue sticks hot glue all kinds of great information so we've made this corner you know we made the entire circle and now what i'm going to do is just look it over and see how it looks and I'm going to stop the video here so this will be like a three-part video um, maybe maybe two part I don't know because um, I'm gonna do the other one off camera my body is starting to ache so I cannot sit in my chair much longer I'm gonna have to get up and move around some now this part right here you see how I'm just going back over it um, be careful when you do this because you could rip your napkin and if you do a lot of tugging on your napkin you don't want that so now what I'm gonna do because this I think at the end I may make a circle like a pink circle and just glue it down in the inside so no one is the wiser on any of this but this is gonna be a hot air balloon candy dish so I have a, a couple of days before I need to get this video up, but I don't like not having my videos ready for my, um, the collabs that I'm in. I just feel like, um, unprepared when I'm like, oh, this is today. That's this, you know, I don't like that feeling. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is. Yeah, get confused, right? I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna take this and I'll put this back in here. And now we have our roundness going on and I'm just using something to set on. I'm gonna put it on my other Mod Podge right here and that will be my setting situation. Hopefully, I didn't screw up and put the Mod Podge around the lip because that would suck. All right, I want to say thank you all for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.